I want to talk about world changers today. Is that okay? I want to talk about world changers. I'm looking at a room full of world, world changers today. Praise the Lord. Say, I am a world changer. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I, I, listen, turn with me very quickly to Matthew 28. We'll begin in verse 18. Jesus came, spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. We call that the Great Commission. Now turn with me to Mark chapter 16, verse 15. I'll be reading from the Amplified Version. And he said to them, Go into all the world, preach and publish openly the good news, the gospel to every creature of the whole human race. We call this the Great Commission because it is great in doctrine, it is great in pack, uh, to impact our lives as the church, but it is great in scope. It has a global world view. Jesus said, I want you to think about the world. In fact, he says, I want you to change the world. He says, I want you to go into all the world. He says, I want you to change nations. I want you to teach them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. I want you to say, I'm a nation changer. I want you to say I'm a world changer. I want you to know that the one who lives on the inside of you has a global world view. I tell you what, he gave the church the great commission. And in the giving of that commission, he said, I want you to think about the world. You say it's too big a thought. I say, no, it's not. I say, no, it's not. I say, the one that lives on the inside of you loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him. Listen, if we're going to share Jesus with the world, that makes us world changers. If we can think outside this box, think outside these walls, think about the neighbor next door, think about the city next to ours, think about the state that adjoins, think about the world for heaven's sakes. God wants us to be world changers. Say, I am a world changer. In this sermon series that I'm starting today, I want to talk about world changers. And I've picked out several. We have good examples in, in Scripture. We've got Paul. We've got Peter. We've got James. We've got John. And, and on it goes. I, I want to talk about people that started at one place, met Jesus, and became a world changer. I think that describes you. Amen? Because when you look at Peter's life, Peter was a liar and denier, and then he became the preacher of Pentecost. Something happened in his life. Paul was an antichrist zealot. He was a persecutor of the church, but then he became the promoter of the church and the writer mostly of the New Testament. Something happened in his life. When you look at James, James, the half-brother of Jesus, he was a denier of Jesus. He didn't believe in Jesus, though he was raised in the same house with Jesus he chided Jesus but then he became the writer of the book of James then he became a leader in the church of Jerusalem something happened in his life when you look at John John was a very humble fisherman but John gave us the gospel of John first second and third John the book of Revelation something happened in the life of John I want you to know the same thing that happened in their life has happened in my life the same thing that's happened in my life has happened in your life I had a meeting with Jesus hallelujah I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior glory to God I just think that we need to get a revelation of what God wants us to do in life. And he doesn't want us to think small. He doesn't want us to see small. He doesn't want us to believe small. Come on, somebody. He wants us to be world changers. I think about Creflo Dollar's church. You know what the name of his church is? World Changers International. What a great name for a church. Glory to God. World Changers International. But every church should be a world changer church. Every Christian should be a world changer church. You say, no, I, I, I couldn't possibly be a world changer. I say, you are a world changer because we have a great commission to change the world. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. 
I want to look at Paul for the next few minutes. Paul was not a charismatic man. Paul was not an eloquent man. Paul, I'm talking about the Apostle Paul. He was not charismatic. He was not eloquent. He was not good looking. In fact, the early church writers, the early church fathers, had a description of Paul, and it was not flattering at all. In fact, Paul knew what people were saying about him. If you look real quickly with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, amplified version, he said, for they say, he knew what people were saying about about him. How many of y'all know what people say about you? Yeah. He said, for they say... His letters are weighty and impressive and forceful and telling, but his personality and his bodily presence are weak, and his speech and delivery are utterly contemptible of no account. Man, that's what Paul says. He says, I know what people say about me. He says, I can write a good letter, but when I get in front of them, they're not impressed at all. So I don't look good, don't sound good, doesn't come across well. And then in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 3, he said, I was with you in weakness, in fear, in much trembling. Verse 4, uh, that was verse 3, verse 4, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. He said, listen, I know when I was with you, I I was weak, I was fearful, I was trembling. He said, I know I did not put on a good presentation. I was not a master communicator, but when the anointing started flowing, things started changing. Glory to God. That's when the power showed up. That's when the Holy Ghost showed up. Glory to God. Let me tell you, it's not going to be by your eloquence. It's not going to be by your charismatic character. It's not even going to be by your looks, though we're all good looking in this house let me tell you it's gonna be by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Spirit glory to God now (laughs) hallelujah Paul had five characteristics of world changers and they apply to our lives as well five characteristics of world changers and here's number one number one world changers have a mind changing experience a mind changing experience now I'm not talking about little changes of the mind I'm not talking about uh, choosing coke or diet coke that's that's not what I'm, I'm talking about I'm not talking about mashed potatoes baked potato no I'm talking about fundamental changes in your life I'm talking about changes in your worldview. I'm talking about the rewiring of your brain. I'm talking about the reorientation of your life. I'm talking about deep changes, fundamental changes. You mean you used to think this way, but now you think that way. Come on. You used to be that way, but now you're this way. Glory to God. I'm not talking about the surface changes. I'm talking about deep, fundamental, come to Jesus changes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As a principal, when I had students that were acting up in the class and the teacher was done, couldn't take them anymore, and their fellow students were done, couldn't take them anymore, and they finally got sent to my office, the first thing that I would tell that youngster is, please have a seat. And they say, yes, Pastor. I say, you know what we're going to do now? No, Pastor, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to have a come to Jesus moment <laughs> in your life right now because between the two of us, Jesus is going to show up and some things are going to change. Hallelujah. I'm talking about come to Jesus moments, hallelujah. Fundamental changes in your life. Paul was a persecutor of the church. Paul was an anti-Christian zealot until he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Acts chapter 9 says that Paul in verse 1 was still breathing out threats and slaughter and murder against the disciples of the Lord. He went to the high priest. He asked letters to go to the synagogues of Damascus if he found anybody who was in the way that he could bind them up, bring them back for persecution, back to Jerusalem. Verse 3, and it says, As he journeyed, he came near to Damascus, and suddenly a light shone round about him from heaven. Verse 4, And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul... 
Saul, why are you persecuting me? Then he had his come to Jesus moment. Glory to God. In verse 5, Lord, who are you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. A goad is a sharp stick that you move cattle along with. I want you to know some of you have been kicking against the goads. The Holy Spirit has been poking you. The Holy Spirit has been prodding in you to a fundamental change in your life. The Holy Spirit says, I know you're over here, but I'm trying to get you. Come on, church. I'm trying to get you to where you need to be. I'm going to poke you. I'm going to prod you and get you on the right path. It's hard to kick against the goads. Verse 6, so he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what would you have me to do? He said, rise and go to the city and you will be told what you must do transformational thinking and let me let me just assure you if you can change your mind you can change the world <laughs> hallelujah one thought one idea can change the world over the weekend in celebration of the 4th of July, I've been watching a lot of documentaries on the Revolutionary War. And uh, my, my most favorite form of entertainment is a documentary. And the History Channel was just playing over and over about the Revolutionary War. And I, and I realized that the, the patriots, the, the, um, the Americans uh, that uh, were rebelling against the British, we had no army. We had no navy against the world superpower at that time. The British had the best navy. The British had the best army. We had no army. We had no navy. We had an idea. Glory to God. That's all we had is an idea. We want to be free from tyrannical rule of a king. We want to be a free people. Glory to God. All we had was an idea and a willingness to die for and it changed the world <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah I love a good documentary I've also been watching Shark Week anybody been watching Shark Week <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> glory to God I always learn something watching a documentary and, and this is what I've learned about Shark Week never ever ever go in the ocean <laughs> how many y'all with me <laughs> Never go in the water. <laughs> Any body of water. I'm talking backyard pools, don't go in there. <laughs> Bathtubs, don't go in there. You never know. You never know. I, I don't even lean too far over the sink to wash the dishes anymore. <laughs> you just never know. You got to be careful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But a changed mind can change the world. And transformational thinking, this is why, why Paul said, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Because you can transform the world. Don't let the world conform you. You transform the world. How do you do it? By the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. People with renewed minds, people with transformational thinking have a a desire, a burning desire to challenge the status quo. They have a burning desire to ignore conventional wisdom. They're not going to let the world define them. They're going to be defined by what God has poured into their spirit. They're not listening to the world anymore. They're not listening to conventional wisdom anymore. They're not even listening to what the, the status quo is anymore. They're saying, nope, that doesn't fit me. God has given me a new way of looking at things. I wish I had an amen. God has given me a new way of thinking about things. Look at the, uh, the Apostle Paul in Galatians 2, verse 11. He said, there's a problem in the church. And he says, you know what? I'm going to challenge the status quo because I'm going to change the world. The problem in the church was that the church was divided between Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians. And when the Apostle Peter, when he would go among the Gentiles, he would act like a Gentile. But when the Jewish Christians would come in, then he would start to act like a Jewish Christian. And Paul said, we cannot have that. Galatians 2 and verse 11. Then when Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him to his face 
for what he did was very wrong. How many of y'all would ever want to stand up in front of everybody else and oppose Peter, <laughs> the apostle Peter? Paul did, verse 12. When he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile Christians who were not circumcised. But afterwards, when some of the friends of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore, for he was afraid of criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Christ Jewish Christians followed Peter's hypocrisy. Even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. When I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel message, I said to Peter in front of all the others, since you, a Jew by birth, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile, why are you now trying to make these Gentiles follow the Jewish traditions? Listen, the renewed mind, a world changer, is not going to be satisfied with the status quo. When they see that it's wrong, they're going to stand up and say, you know what, this doesn't work. We've got to change this thing. We've got to do what's right in the eyes of God and not what's in the... Glory to God. We can't listen to conventional wisdom anymore because conventional wisdom will just get you the same old conventional ways. Listen, we're trying to walk in newness of life with the same old thought processes. You can't walk in newness of life with oldness of thought. Hallelujah. <laughs> I wish I had a hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen to this in my research. I came up with this beautiful thought. Uh, somebody quoted this. Conventional wisdom will, re will yield conventional results. I'll read that again. Conventional wisdom will yield conventional results. If you plan to change the world, then you must embrace uncertainty and walk into uncharted territory. You must be willing to ditch your roadmap, take the scenic route, write the unwritten story, and realize that you can't paint a masterpiece on a cluttered canvas. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Praise the Lord. The first thing Paul did when he was saved, he said, I did not go up to Jerusalem to consult with the apostles. He said, I went to Arabia. He said, I went to get alone with Jesus. So I got my revelation from Jesus. I, I didn't get it from anybody else. I got it from Jesus. Amen. And those who are renewing their minds to become world changers have to realize that if the conventional wisdom is not changing the world in the way God wants it changed, we're just going to have to get together with God and figure out the way God wants it changed and do it His way. It may seem unconventional, but let's go ahead and do it His way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, number one, world changers have had a mind-changing experience, a come-to-Jesus moment in their life that has utterly, thoroughly, completely changed their thinking, their worldview as to how am I supposed to approach this world. Number two, those who are world changers are filled with purpose. They're filled with a holy cause. They have an assignment. They, th their purpose identifies and, and helps to uh, create in them uh, a sense of who they are in Christ Jesus. Look with me in Acts chapter 9, verse 15. The Lord said to Ananias, go tell Paul, this is what Paul is, Paul is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles, before kings, before the children of Israel. God said Paul has a purpose, and he's going to share my name, my message, my gospel with the Gentiles. Now, Paul got that revelation, and if it was not for that revelation, we would not have a lot of the truth that we have in the New Testament. We'd still be trying to live under the law. We'd try to conform the law to Christian revelation. But Paul was the one who says, no, that, that's not the way you do it. It's by grace. It's not by law. Glory to God. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, <laughs> lest any man should boast. Not of the law, lest any man should boast. Now watch this in Galatians 2, verse 6. And the leaders of the church had nothing to add to what I was preaching. He said, I got my preaching right, right up front. By the way, their reputation as great leaders made no difference to me, for God has no favorites. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. That's Paul. He had his mind renewed, glory to God. Verse 7. Instead, they saw that God had given me the responsibility of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles, just as he had given Peter the responsibility of preaching to the Jews. Verse 8. For the same God who worked through Peter as the apostle to the Jews also worked through me as an apostle to the Gentiles. In fact, James, Peter, John, who were known as pillars of the church, recognized the gift of God had given me, and they accepted Barnabas and me as their co-workers. What Paul was saying was, listen, I have a calling, I have a purpose, I have a mission. I know what it is, and anybody who has met me know what it is. Glory to God. World changers are mindful. No, that's not power. World changers are passionate. World changers are passionate about the purpose of God in their life. It is who they are, glory to God. World changers know who they are. World changers connect to something bigger than they are. World changers make a positive difference in people's lives. World changers are full of purpose. Hallelujah. Say, I am filled with the purposes of God in my life. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, so are you. Turn to somebody else and say, so are you. Here's number three. World changers have deep core convictions. They have faith for their vision. World changers, like Paul, will say, I press toward the mark of the prize, a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Listen, there's things that will press against you. Nonetheless, you press towards. There's things that want to hold you back. Nonetheless, you press towards. I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I will not be denied. I will not be held back. I will not. Listen, I am going to get across the finish line. I am going to see my purpose come to pass. I am going to see the handiwork of God manifest in my life. I will change the world Hallelujah. I will change the world hallelujah you say pastor you can yes I can <laughs> hallelujah 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 number three world changers have deep core convictions I read a passage about Mother Teresa it says of Mother Teresa, after consistently witnessing the Indian people in Kolkata suffer and perish in poverty, she could not take it anymore. She was a prominent teacher doing well in her career. But something of higher value, uh, but something of higher value to her interrupted her career. She later called this experience a call within the call. She goes on and says, I was to leave the convent and help the poor while living among them. It was an order. To fail would have been to break the faith. Amen. World changers have deep core convictions. World changers say, why not me? Amen. World changers say, why not me? The, the rest of the world says, can't be you. But world changers say, why not? Why can't it be me? Mother Teresa said, why not me? There's other things that she could do, but why not? Why not change the world? Why not have a vision and a mission and a belief? Why not, why not speak the words over your life that says, you know what? God gave me a great commission. Go into all the world, disciple all nations, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe whatsoever things I've commanded you. Lo, I'll be with you until the end of the age. I said, okay, why not? Why not me? Can you change a, a nation? Well, he said I could. I, he wouldn't tell me to do something that I, I couldn't do. Go into all the world. Disciple all nations. Glory to God. What's your intention, Pastor? Disciple all nations. Teach them to observe whatsoever things Christ has commanded us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Why not me? Glory to God. And finally, or fourth, World changers understand there is a price to pay. 
Philippians 3 and 10 says, I want to know Christ. This is Paul saying, I want to know Christ and the experience and experience his mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, uh, sharing in his death. There is always a price to pay. And this is usually where people bail out. When it starts to get tough, when there starts to be a demand, when there starts to be an expectancy that takes you out of your comfort level, there is always a price to pay. But world changers have a higher than average tolerance to risk. I'll risk it, glory to God. I'll go for it, glory to God. I'm all in, glory to God. I'm not turning back, glory to God. I'm hanging on to the hem of his garment, glory to God. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the opposition does. I don't care if the winds are blowing against me. I don't care if the tide is rising up against me. I have my mission. I have a revelation. I've had a fundamental life-changing experience with Jesus. Jesus Christ and if Jesus told me to disciple all nations I'm gonna disciple all nations hallelujah hallelujah world changers understand there are no shortcuts there are no playing it safe there is a price to be paid and finally number five world changers take action world changers seize the day world changers get up and go world changers said I'm gonna do it I'm going to change the world. I think I'm looking at a room full of world changers here this morning. I'm looking at a room that says, you know what? I want to see the gospel spread throughout the world. I want to see revival in this nation. I want to see things turn around for the glory of God. I want to see a final harvest come in before there's a shout and a trump. And I believe that a pew I'm sitting in is a good launching pad for change to come to the world. If you believe it, say amen. I said, and if you believe it, say amen. Will you stand with me and give the Lord a shout and a praise?